Thank you everyone for coming out this morning, and we'll go ahead and start with a prayer. Dear Lord God, we thank you for keeping us all safe as we traveled out to this morning to hear your word. We pray that you'll be with those who weren't able to travel, the shut-ins and all of them, and you pray that you'll um, be with them, and we pray that you will be with all of us to be lights in the world to you, and we'll, we pray that you will help us to do your word, and we pray that you will uh, be with us all and forgive us of our sins, and it's in your son's name we pray, amen. Okay, so the theme for our classes on Sunday morning are they're not just kids' stories. So the story we're going to be looking at this morning is the Tower of Babel, which when I first chose this story, we had a list of topics we went to choose. I chose it because it's not one that I was super familiar with. Um, obviously, when I went in, I wanted to go and learn new stuff about it while I was doing research. However, when I went to start looking at it, I didn't realize it was only nine verses long. So, looking at it, I was like, okay, how am I going to find enough material to fill up a 45-minute Bible class? But as I started looking more into it, there's a lot more material that I realized that So, that's where we're going to be today. So, I'll have everyone turn to Genesis 11 for me, and that's where we're going to be spending most of our time. So before we, before we get to that, the history leading up to this, just a quick overview. In Genesis, in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, we've got the story of creation. In Genesis 3 and 4, we've got the record of the first sin and the first murder, Cain murdering his brother Abel. In Genesis 5 and 6, we start talking about how evil is starting to spread across the world. Um, it starts talking about how man's thoughts were evil continuous, continuous, which results in chapters 7 through 9, which is the Great Flood, which is what we looked at last week. And so Genesis chapter 10, after, after the Great Flood, it lists all the nations that came from Noah, his genealogy and everything that came from that. However, the running theme in all of this is that even though God is showing his power in creation, when sorry, he showed his power through the great flood, man still is fallible and still fits the sin. Adam and Eve, despite God's warning, didn't listen to the serpent instead and decided to eat from the forbidden tree. Cain murdered his own brother out of jealousy over a sacrifice. The people before the flood were said to have only had evil thoughts to the point where God regretted making them. And even the one exception to that evil, Noah, was still disobeyed God afterwards. He says that he got drunk even though God spared his family. And finally, the people after Noah were told to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, which we'll see in a minute, in a minute they clearly didn't do. So in Genesis chapter 11 and verse 1, we read, Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as the people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we are dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all have one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do now will become impossible to them. But come, let us go down and there and confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over all the face of the earth. So, starting off, while the Bible doesn't specifically say how long after the flood that 
this story takes place, does anyone want to take a guess on how long it's estimated? So a lot of the sources I found online, um, obviously these, these are all online, but they were all in, a, in agreement that it could be anywhere between 100 and 350 years, which seems like a big gap, but only a couple generations after the flood, you would think that these people would have heard these stories and know this, given the fact that just a couple generations before, they had just survived this great disaster. And a lot of these um, estimates I found used the genealogy from chapter 10 to kind of estimate this, because it lists all the nations that came from Noah. Now, in verses 1 and 2, it says that everyone on the earth had the same language and that they all moved together to settle in the plain of Shinar, which the plain of Shinar is in the southern part of Mesopotamia, which if you don't know where that is, that's modern-day Iraq, and that is actually just south of where Baghdad is, modern-day Baghdad is. And so in chapter, in, if we go back to chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, you don't have to turn there, but it says that Nimrod, a descendant of Noah, started his kingdom in Babel in Shinar. Does anyone want to take a guess what nation came from that? An ancient, uh, ancient enemy of Babel or of Israel. Sorry, it was Babylon. <laughs> so, in verses three and four, the people decided to build the city out of bricks, which means that they wanted to build the city to last. They wanted to make a name for themselves. Um, at the time, houses might have been made out of wood. They may have been. A, they may have been made out of. We know, we don't specifically know. But it says that they wanted to build the city to last, and they wanted to build the tower to reach heaven, which would be a symbol for them to stay together. It says, lest we disperse across the face of the whole earth. Now, at this point, if they're, they're building this tower to heaven, which means they're trying to elevate themselves to the point of God, and any Jews that would have been hearing this story, read from the old law, Obviously, we, we know that when he says the same thing, they say that he's blaspheming, and they kill him for it, even though he ends up rising again later. So any Jews reading this would have known that he's blasphemous, and the people trying to rise themselves to the level of God. And this is also a, uh, in direct confrontation to what God told the people to do in, at the start of Genesis 9, which is where we read that he says to be fruitful and multiply and spread across the face of the earth. They all stay in one area. So, starting in verse 5, we see that the Lord comes down to see this tower and the city. And he says, and like I said, he says, Behold that they are one people, and they all have one language, and this is only the beginning of what they'll do, and nothing that they propose will be impossible to them. Which is something that I find interesting, that even if they are uniting against God in this case, it still says that when, when they unite together, nothing is impossible to them. In this case, that's not a good thing, but maybe that's something to learn from. If we all stay together, we can, we can do whatever we want. Not whatever we want, that's... <laughs> exactly. And we actually will come back to this verse in one of our applications as well. That's verse 6. Now, in verse 7, God confuses the people's languages. It says, Come, let us go down and there and confuse their languages so that they may not understand one another's speech. Now, an interesting thing I found while doing research into this is that the us in several of the older versions of the Bible, like the New King James, the original King James, stuff like that, the us is actually capitalized. So this is God speaking to himself, or us. We know that there's God the Father, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the Son. And I started, look, I started looking at that just because I was curious. Do we know where else in the Bible um, 
an example of one of these three using the power of different languages is. Do you have any examples? Yes. Exactly. Let us make man. Um, do we have any other examples? Exactly. The day of Pentecost. That's the one that I have here. Um, it says that in Acts 2, the Holy Spirit came down to the apostles to give them gifts of speaking in tongues so that the people, all the Jews that gathered there, they, were, they had been dispersed during the, um, when the nation had been taken into captivity. They had been dispersed all over the face of the earth. But for this feast, they all gathered back in Jerusalem but because they had been living other places, they spoke different languages. And so the Holy Spirit came to the apostles and gave them the power to speak in tongues. So this us that's said in Genesis 11 to have confused the languages of man was also the same us to give man the power to reach across those language barriers and offer salvation. So in verses 8 and 9, we see that... Uh, it says that the Lord dispersed them from the face of the earth. Sorry, the Lord dispersed them all across the face of the earth, and they left off building the city. Sorry, get my notes in order. Now, he confused their languages. Take a second with me to think. Say you're going about your normal work day. You're you go to work, you have co-workers, you have friends, depending on how long you've been at this job. I'm sure you have friends that you've made along the way. You interact with these people every day. So say one day you come to your job and suddenly you go to greet these people and suddenly they can't understand you or you can't understand them. These are people that you've gone to work with every day. Some of them you may hang out with outside of work. Say you go to, you may get lunch together, you may go to cookouts, you may even go to church together. I personally know a few people who have, who have actually found their spouses at work. So you go in one day and you can't understand each other. How would you react to that? Obviously, there would be confusion. Some people might start panicking, because unfortunately that's something people do nowadays. But... <clears throat> You, you can't understand your own friends, possibly your own family, depending on how widespread it is. So just here in Florida and even just in Ocala itself, you find people from all kinds of walks of life, all kinds of backgrounds. You've got just myself. I personally work at a unnamed chicken restaurant that's closed on Sundays. If you know, you know. <laughs> now, I work front of house, which means that I work with all the people that come in. I work with um, all the people who come in, who want to order our food, everything. I help those people. Um, and if you know which restaurant I'm talking about, it's Chick-fil-A, I think, in case you didn't guess. <laughs> you know how busy it is all the time. It is constantly slammed. We get thousands of people coming through this place every day. But the heart of our operation there is really, really our back of house, the people in the kitchen. Without them, we wouldn't be able to give, these, give everyone this food. That's why people come there. So one thing that I find interesting about our store specifically is that I'd probably, I don't know specific numbers, but I'd say about 80% of the people there don't speak English as a first language. Pretty much all of them do speak some, do speak some amount of English, some better than others. But for the most part, most of them do not speak English as a first language. Despite that fact, we are still able to communicate. We've gotten to the point where everyone is able to communicate to each other, which to the point where we're able to work as a well-oiled machine to serve thousands of people a day. But that's because we've been exposed to these languages before. We know that people have different languages nowadays. However, the people in... Genesis 11 here, they've all had the same language for generations, for as long as they've all been together. They've all had the same language. They've never been exposed to this before. So 
Just think about how terrifying that could be for some of those people. Obviously, they're not trusting in God, and this is what God is doing to get them to do what he says. But that, that could be terrifying for some people. Not being able to understand your own friends, family, people you've known for your whole life. Now, if you don't mind sharing, do you mind raising your hand if you speak more than one language? Got one over there. Does anyone else speak any more than one language? Good. Well, you guys have a heads up over what, what these people had. <laughs> Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Especially places like Miami where we have a lot of refugees coming in. That's why I said Florida specifically because you go a lot of places. There's a lot of people who speak Spanish around here, which is awesome. You, you see all these cultures around here. And yet a lot of people can't understand each other because a lot of people just know one language, which is okay because that's what you grew up with. That's what you're used to. These people didn't have that opportunity to know that. And we see what the result of that is that they stopped building the city. Yes? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, they didn't know anything. And because of that, they had to stop construction on this city and the tower that they were building. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and that's something I've seen, like I said, with a lot of my coworkers, that a lot of them don't speak English as a first language. A lot of them who have just started there don't understand a lot of what we're talking about. And so they take that second to try and figure out what it is we're saying. But they've been exposed to that. They know what's going on. These people had no idea what was going on, and because of that, like I said, they had to stop construction on the city, and it says that God ended up dispersing them across the face of the earth because of this. Yep, so in verse 9, it says that, after all this took place, it says that therefore the name of this, of this place was called Babel because the Lord confused the languages of all the earth and the Lord dispersed them from there across all the earth. And the word Babel actually comes from the Hebrew, Hebrew word Balel, which means to jumble or confuse, which after reading that we can, is definitely an appropriate name. Now, does anyone want to take a guess? This is something that I actually found really interesting when I was doing my research. How many languages do you think there are, languages and dialects do you think there are in modern times across the earth? 3,000, 5,000, any other guesses? When I looked it up, it said that uh, as, of na as of today, I believe it was dated March 31st of this year, it said there are over 7,000 different languages and dialects spoken throughout, the, uh, spoken throughout the earth. And all of that came from this one, this one story here of man not listening to God and God confusing their languages. And yet we still have all these many different ways to communicate with each other, which I personally think is amazing. So I just want to go back real quick. Yes. Mm hmm mm hmm Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Exactly. If you didn't hear what she said, you got languages like Chinese, Mandarin, a lot of these Asian languages that sound nothing like, look nothing like any of our Western languages, anything. And so it, looking back, it's like you would think, how would we get a language so far different? That could be from this here, where God confused it, and they ended up getting separated and ended up mutating into all these different languages that we have now. But God confused those languages. And something else I actually read is that at least modern day language, it doesn't say farther than that, but it says modern day language can be narrowed down to about six different dialects from six different countries, or usually Asian or European. But all of those languages came from those six, and then those six had to have come from somewhere. And we have this story here to tell us that that's how those came to be. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Exactly. Yeah. The these people once God confused their language, they didn't have they weren't able to go back to their language they had before. They and communicate again through that. They, whether God did it or whatever happened, they ended up not being able to communicate in this one language that they had again. Like she said, it was the point was made earlier that sometimes they had to go back to their original language, think about what it was in that, and then translate it over into English. These people didn't have the ability to do that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yes. Like she said, all um, when God ended up dispersing them, he, it, he probably ended up dispersing them by language, sending people who spoke language X over here, language Y over here, whatever the base languages were, so that they weren't confused anymore. They had people they were able to rely on at that point that they could understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's something you'll notice when you go to any tourist destination popular one in Florida is Disney World. You go anywhere else though, but that's the most popular one. It's right next to an international airport. You get people from all around the world flying into there. You notice that all these tourists will usually stay with their group that they came with because they all spoke the same language and they don't, a lot of the time, they won't understand a lot of what people are saying around them because they all speak that language of where they're from. And so they'll all hang out together. Well, they're that's how, who they rely on to get around and to do what it is they're there to do, which is to have fun in that case. Um, you would also, you would also find that in large cities that mm -hmm. mm -hmm. even though they may speak English, Exactly. And like you said, for um, a lot of big cities, you'll find, say, you've got like the Italian area, you find like the Chinese area, a lot of places like that. That's because even though they might speak English, they're still, to get there, still staying together so that they can rely on each other because that's what they know, that's what they're used to. And they, in this story, they weren't just building a tower, which 
that in the chil it's a children's story when you're telling them that's what everyone knows it's the tower of babel but they were building it wasn't just a tower they say that they're going to build a city around it too you had at this point depending on how long after the flood you could have had thousands or tens of thousands of people at this point and they were building a place to live they were building an actual city like i said they were building out of bricks it was meant to last and but, of course, they all spoke the same language at the time, and so it was a little bit easier to build all of that. They didn't have to have that division of language. But even, after, even though God confused their languages as a punishment and to get them to separate, it's still just amazing about all the culture and everything that came as a result of this division, all the separate cultures you see throughout the world. It, it's just amazing to go and look at how different a lot of things are nowadays, but we all still came from the same place. Yes? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, like she said, the she or God could have separated the people because they weren't including him. They they were relying on themselves. They were only including themselves, and because of that, they were trying to elevate them to the elevate themselves to the point of God. But once he separated them, they had to rely on they had to rely on him to take care of them. And you see this because it doesn't say that they dispersed because of it, because of their languages being different. It says that God dispersed these people. Because they would have been confused, they could have been panicking, like I said earlier, but it says that God went and dispersed these people across the face of the earth. To, with all the people they spoke the same languages now, they had to rely on him to survive after that point because that would have been scary for them even though they weren't listening to what God said, they now had to trust him in this. And like you said, it says, God says to himself, it says that now that because they speak the same language, nothing is impossible for them. And give me one second. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is made of, I need to go and look at specifically how to say that word, <clears throat> but it said it was like bitum, bitumen. Gotcha. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And we see modern day roads and everything. Granted, around some places it doesn't seem like they're holding up very well. You got a lot of potholes. But roads today are made of asphalt because it's durable. You see, there are roads that have been around in this country for decades, or in some cases even centuries, maybe not made out of asphalt, but they're made to last. And that's what they were building this city for, was to make it to last, because they wanted it to be, it says in that verse, it, they wanted it to be almost like a beacon to them to stay together so that they wouldn't disperse across the face of the earth. And... That is interesting that they would have had the, the stuff to build something like that back then. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I was looking it up in Matthew 19 and verse 26. Jesus says, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Obviously, in this context, it is we are looking to God to help us make things possible. And it's not, we're not trying to rely on ourselves to do that. And though God says they were one people, they, nothing was impossible to them. After he confused those languages, he, they made it so that they had to rely on God for that. And that is actually one of my application points here that I have is mm -hmm. tar tar slime exactly like you said asphalt they're exactly it's sticky <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's where a lot of our oil still comes from nowadays, which is amazing that they had that technology back then to make the, that, and we still use it in modern days. But as far as application goes, um, the first thing I would probably say, and this one shouldn't come as a shock to anyone here, if God tells you to do something, it's probably best if you do it. <laughs> and like I said, God told these people after the great flood and everything, he told them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Now, it's assumed that they did one of those parts being fruitful, but in this story, it's not said that they multiplied, or it's not said that they dispersed across the face of the earth. They all stayed together because they were relying on themselves. Which leads into my second point that we should trust in, put our trust in God and not in ourselves. If we go back to verse 4 in Genesis 11, it says that they built the tower to make a name for themselves and so that they wouldn't be dispersed across the face of the earth, even though that's exactly what God told them to do. And we see more of this throughout the Old Testament from the people of Israel, God's own chosen people, from the time that God took the, that God delivered them out of Egypt from bondage. We see them in the wilderness grumbling because God because they were hungry, even though God provided them. They didn't like what God provided them. Um, when they eventually made it to the promised land, God gave them judges to rule over themselves. But instead of trusting God, they decided that they wanted kings to be like the na all the nations around them. And eventually, when those kings ended up tearing the nation into two, both of those nations ended up serving idols, false gods, instead of putting their trust into a one true God, which ended up resulting in the, the people of Israel being taken away, dispersed across the face of the earth. And which is a little ironic because one of the people who one of the nations that took them into captivity was a nation that started right here in this spot in, the Bab in Babel, the nation of Babylon. But we should put our trust in God even if sometimes we don't see what he's planning, what he has planned for us. We should still trust him that he will take care of us and that he knows what's best for us. And our, my final application here from verse 7, again, like I said before, it, where God says, let us come down and confuse their languages. God said, um, even though God's separated man with that language barrier, he still gave us the ability to reunite under his new law, the sacrifice of Jesus and the church. God sent his son Jesus down to earth to die for us, which made the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And in Acts 2, like we looked at earlier, he gave the apostles the ability to reach across those barriers and to spread the good news to the people that had gathered in Jerusalem. And those people took it back in their own languages and taught everyone else. So we see that God gave us that ability to reunite under him, which goes back to, like it said, with God, all things are possible. 
So even though, like I said, even though the Jews who were still technically one people, they were still the nation of Israel, they had been dispersed and they all spoke different languages, they were still gathered together and they were still able to receive that salvation through, from the apostles through the Holy Spirit. And, of course, we can only get that salvation through the blood of Christ, and it all brings us together um, as his church with the hope of salvation. Um, does anyone have any questions so far or anything? Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't know if you heard what he said, but obviously the people who were in the process of building this city would have had families back home. We don't know if they lived in the city or if they lived outside while they were just building it. But it would have been weird if one day Dad went out to go to work and speaking your language and then came back speaking a totally different one. We don't, it doesn't say if God confuse the languages by family or if it was just random. We don't have that information in here, but that certainly would have been scary for them to, if you go home and suddenly your own, fa- your own family can't understand you. <laughs> that is very true. That is very true. Yes? That, that right there is a perfect example. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When we talk about family... Counseling, mm-hmm. you have to know each other's language, mm-hmm. and we all do speak sometimes in mm-hmm. different languages. I'm, I'm saying one thing, hear me, and you mm-hmm. hear something else. Exactly. That's uh, that's a really good application here. Is even though we might speak the same language, words. So, exactly. It, it's all words. You might not. That's where a lot of like family issues come from, is people hearing but not understanding what you're saying. It's almost like they're speaking a different language. And that's a good application for us to just stop and actually listen to what people are saying sometimes instead of just jumping straight into arguing with them or trying to say, this is what you're saying or I'm right. If you just stop and actually listen, then you might actually be able to understand them. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Exactly. Mm-hmm. 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 Exactly, you got to be on the same. What's that? Exactly, yeah. Like she said, and yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like you said, we, we all, us all here speaking the same language, it's almost easy in a sense to be able to talk to each other. We've got people 
all across the world preaching the gospel that we, that we as a congregation support. And those people probably know the native language in these countries that they're at. But it's hard because like in here, God dispersed them across the earth. It's almost like a new challenge, like you said. If it was easy, it wouldn't be... Um, it, it wouldn't be... You wouldn't benefit from it as much. Like we had the lesson on Wednesday night about why does God allow suffering or challenges like that. You hear the term a lot, suffering builds character or challenge builds character, stuff like that. And these people definitely, we don't know if they had it easy, obviously they're, it's, they're way back in that time, it would, would have been a lot harder than what we had have today, but they would have been used to it, and throwing this challenge at them would have helped them build character, in this case, hopefully looking back toward God instead of that tower in the sky that they're building. Yes? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. In case you didn't hear, that, that actually leads into another very good application point that I said earlier. A, a lot of these people, they didn't think alike. When their languages got confused, they ended up banding together. And obviously, human... Human beings are fallible, even after being their language being confused. They're still ended up. They still end up falling again to sin, and that's the running theme all throughout history. Um, yes. I talk to a lot of people that believe without their churches mm -hmm. and the organization that they cannot keep all of their congregations mm -hmm. believing the same thing. That we teach, got the unifying of, uh, mm -hmm. factor. You take the same book, mm -hmm. and you just agree. You guys are way over there. You talk different. You look different. You're funny. Mm -hmm. We're good. We're right. No, no. but mm -hmm. no. If you take the same book, we're all the same. Exactly. That's the factor. Mm -hmm. Not an institution. Not a United Nations to. Get us all together, not mm -hmm. a united denomination, not a united mm -hmm. whatever. The word of God itself, and people tell me, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. And along those same lines, while I was doing my research, one of the websites I used just to see what it said was Wikipedia, which ne isn't necessarily the best source for a lot of historical stuff. But just while looking through there, seeing what it had to say, it's got footnotes for different articles, and one of them was the Bible. And just on that little bit of the Bible, it said that the Bible is the founding document. In this case, it's the only thing we believe in. But for a lot of different religions, that's what its founding document. And even though a lot of these, we believe what we believe because the Bible says it, a lot of these um, religions have other documents that they use, other things like that. We all still have the Bible, and if we can just agree on the Bible itself, then we can start working together again. Maybe not, it won't be fast, obviously. It won't be instant. It's going to be challenging, like we said before. But we have that Bible to bring us together, to unify us, and in this case, we're all unified together here as a church. And we have that thing to bring us together. Does anyone have any other questions, comments, anything like that? Yes.
Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, like I said, we trust God. He knows what's best for us. I saw one more hand here. Real quick example. Mm-hmm. It shows God's love here, too, because he knows that power and gold is so high, and then he can make it free, and then he can kill it. That is a good practical application to that. Don't, don't build your towers too high because you won't be able to breathe. God's, God knows what's best for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where are they building that at? Oh, that, that's cool. <laughs> that, that would honestly be something interesting to check out. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so that's about all the time we have. Thank you for coming out this morning. Um, And I was told to let everyone know. Next week, we're actually going to be hearing the story of Abraham from Brandy Cameron. So I saw one more hand. Yes. Thank you. That's some of the feedback I got. So I was.